Good morning, and welcome to video number 18 of me growing out my beard. Today we have some very jacked up percussion writing to fix, but before we get into it, make sure that you click that subscribe button, ring that liberty bell, and click that like button. I am currently the third most subscribed DMC channel, and when I become number one, I will make a very special video. Okay, let's go make the world a better place. The first thing we have submitted was this snare lick. Okay, so we got, let's see. Uh, oh, oh, this is one of those upbeat triplet rolls. I freaking hate how that always looks when it's written. Actually, does MuseScore make it look any better? Nope, it actually looks a whole heck of a lot worse. Uh, hold on, wait, we can change this. If we break up the beams like that, then it should. Yeah, there it is. That's exactly what I want it to look like. Although the problem with that is if you're writing into a score, then that's gonna jack up all of the other staffs. Like if you just want eighth notes for one staff, it's gonna look like that, <laughs> which is totally weird. But we're not, so we're just gonna leave it like this because that's the easiest. Okay, it's like a flam taps, but only one of them is. That's honestly not that poorly written, unless the tempo is faster than what I'm playing. Yeah, this doesn't have the tempo written, so I don't know what it is. Let's just assume it's 168. That's a pretty normal average tempo. <laughs> yeah, those are uh, pretty difficult that fast. Honestly, even if it's slow, I don't really like this. I would just make it all flam taps. So I would just make these two notes flams. And of course, adjust the sticking to be capital letters. So we know what we're doing here. So if it's slow, I would just make it all flam taps, because why the heck not? But if it's faster, I would make it choo-choos. Which those look like that, and they sound like this. And it's a lot easier than flam taps. Okay, then we got this uh, tenor drum part that was sent to me, and... The first thing I notice when I'm just looking at this is there is no sticking, which is really, really annoying. Also, the stem directions go up and down all over the place because it was written in Finale and they didn't flip the stem directions. And the last thing I'm noticing is there are very, very few rudiments, it looks like. Yeah, I'm just gonna sight read uh, the beginning here. Let's see. There's a couple really awkward uh, movements around the drums, and the only rudiment that's in that whole thing is that five stroke roll on drum four. And yeah, with playing tenor drums, if you're just like playing rhythms all around the drums, it's, it's honestly not very impressive. You're gonna want some rudiments, right? Some flams. There are zero flams in this whole thing. That's very frustrating. So here I just took one chunk of this part and put it into MuseScore because we're not gonna go over the whole thing. That'll take all day. Another thing I'm noticing, uh, so these like top hat accents shaped like this, that usually means rim shot. Like you'll hit the rim and the drum and it'll be really, really loud. And there's in here so much, I don't think that's what it means. And there's also some accents like normal ones. Although I do think some of these do mean rim shots, like this one on the Spock. I feel like that would be a rim shot, but when you have a rim shot, that would look like that, an X. That's how you know. So okay, we're just gonna go through this bar by bar. I'm gonna beef it up a little, make it more interesting, and make it a little bit less awkward. So let's see, we start. <laughs> Already hate it. Already hate it. Yeah, I like that. Let's do that. And of course, we're gonna put sticking in so we know what the heck is happening. And I actually figured out how to write sticking in MuseScore finally. Text, not lyrics, it's sticking. And there's no keyboard shortcut. That's a little bit frustrating, but at least I figured this out. Okay, then we got... Uh... <laughs> I don't know what the sticking is. I, I have literally no idea what this should be. Should it be... Yeah, we can make that a paradiddle, 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 and a one. Yeah, when I'm writing for tenor drums, I'm usually thinking rudimentally, right? Sort of like a snare drum mindset, because that's what's impressive on tenors. You know, moving around the drums, of course, but also playing rudiments, right? You, you gotta be able to do both of those things. So 
So something about buzz rolls here, I will almost always write out the check, like the pulse of the buzz roll in rhythm so that you no know, multiple people in the drum line will be looking the same while they do a buzz roll. Yeah, if you just write this, then anyone can pulse that however they want and it might look sloppy. So I chose to do 16th note pulses, I think that works, and then double stops on the one and four drum here. So this is what they got at the end. And I mean, there's nothing inherently wrong with doing that, but playing tenors for so long, I know that when you do double stops on two different drums, you're usually going to either want drums three and four, drums one and two, or the Spox. Drum four and one is, is odd. All right, it's strange doing this, like when you could just be like, you know, uniform to what is the center of your body. I would much rather have that be on three and four. In fact, we could do a crossover, three and four, much cooler. Okay, so here's the new part. We have a wide variety of rudiments. We got some flams, we got some flam taps, we got uh, some puttadas, paradiddles, a couple of crossovers, all good stuff. Let's go compare these two parts. Right, next we got some timpani let's see here we got uh the masquerade waltz by Cacheterian. looks like we're tuned in a b and e yep looks good looks uh <laughs> what <laughs> wait is this there's no way this is legit this has to be either someone's messing with me and like sent me this or this was some kind of weird like crossover copy paste from two different music softwares i highly doubt that Cacheterian would write a dotted, what is that, 63rd? Dotted 64th note 7 lit. <laughs> I, I, I don't think he did that. Yeah, this part is literally impossible for this tempo. If the tempo was like quarter note equals 2, then maybe you could play this. But yeah, this is way too many notes in one measure. One thing I learned in music school is when you're in doubt, go listen to one of the recordings from that symphony. So let's find one. Yeah, it's, it's just a timpani roll, like just a regular old tremolo roll. Nothing to freak out about. It's definitely not any of this <laughs> weird nonsense here. So I'm not even going to bother giving examples for the before and after because, well, this part is impossible, like I said before. But we can listen to it in music software because a computer can do anything. It sounds like the timpani is farting. All right, well now for the fun part, we get to fix this and this is gonna be super easy. We just take all this freaking crap, delete it. Give me that dotted half note in there. Make that a roll. And then we just copy paste that, except for the last note is an E, not a B. And usually when you want a continuous timpani roll like this, you will add uh, the ties. Okay, let's see how this sounds. It still sounds pretty bad, like uh, the timpani is farting. But well, this music software issue, all right? In real life, even if you tried to play those five lit, seven lit weirdness, uh, it would just sound like a timpani roll, just one note, just going, and that's what we want, just one note going. Okay, the last thing we have here is a full entire drum cadence, and there is a lot that is jacked up with this. Just, just first glance, a lot of jacked up stuff. So we're just gonna rewrite the whole thing. I got it uh, transferred over to Muse Score exactly as written. And we're gonna start with the least jacked up of the four parts, which is the cymbal line. And I think this whole thing is written fine. The only issues I have is that the techniques are not written out and the split parts are also not written out. So this first bar, I'm assuming these are hi-hats. That's how I put them into Muse Score. Um, it doesn't say otherwise, but I'm gonna take an educated guess. So we're gonna just add the text add the sticking and hh now we know 
So this next bunch of bars, I am pretty sure these are all sizzle sucks, and they are also going to need to be split up between at least two people because it is physically not possible for one person to just constantly sizz sucking over and over and over forever. There's a few ways we can do this, so let's see. We'll, we'll just do between two separate symbol players. We'll have symbol A be up there and symbol B will be down there. I also like to tie these notes together so that it's just easier to see and uh, oh, oh, no not to that note to this note why is it doing that's annoying i don't want that to happen honestly usually when i write for symbols in muse score i will just not use the symbol line staff i'll just create a second baseline because in the symbol line staff you only have three splits like you got the bottom and then the middle and the top but usually when i'm doing my wacky split screen videos i like to have four symbol players so i'll just add a second baseline and i will just only write the rim clicks as <laughs> the split parts and then you got this big one that's unison yeah every music software i've used i hate the way they write for symbols like i don't get why everyone uses like all these different little note heads like that triangle and the diamond like i'll just use all x's it really doesn't matter because i'm gonna write in the technique anyways the only problem with doing it this way is you don't get like the playback in the file but well i don't need to hear it all right i know my symbol parts are going to be great it won't let me put a tie on that note. Alright, well, we're getting no ties. We're just not going to have them. Even though I like them, we're just not going to get them. And I think these are all crashes. Uh, the first one is just going to have to be a uh, bottom guy by himself. Where the heck is it? There it is. Alright, good. The symbol part is now fixed up. The next most jacked up part is the snare drum part. And once again, we have no sticking in any of these parts, snare, tenor, or bass drum. That is pretty concerning, but we'll figure it out. All right, we got an extreme tap off. Let's see here. <laughs> oh man. All right, the cardinal sin of anything rudimental is you don't want to go from a diddle into a flam. That's like a really, really fast and bad flam tap. Okay, so we're gonna take that out first and foremost. And honestly, I think this could just be cooler in general. Um, based on how the rest of the snare part looks, I, I feel like this is written for, like, you know, maybe medium skill level players. So, assuming just one person's doing this, they could probably beef it up a little bit. All right, yeah, we'll do that. That's pretty cool and visually exciting. Another thing I like doing is when there's a part that's not quite an accent, it's just like an emphasis, like sword aloud. I like putting that symbol whatever that is i like putting that there okay then when we get into the cadence there is a lot of these like rim clicky things and we have a diddle into a flam there too now the thing with rim clicks on marching drums it is not loud like at all in fact you are most likely not going to hear it but looking at everything that's going on in the tenor, bass, and cymbal parts, these rim clicks are not going to be heard through the entire ensemble. So we should just make them regular notes. So that's the first thing I'm going to do. I'm just going to take out all of this. And there are no accents written until we get to the first ending. Let's, uh, I'm just going to put them where I think they go. All right, what do we got here? Let's see. Yeah, I don't, I don't like that at all. Hold on. I feel like the accent pattern uh, should just be flam accents. Yeah, that definitely feels more comfortable to me and will probably make it easier for everybody involved. And then, oh, here's an issue on the repeat. We got that diddle going into the flam. Oh, what a struggle. We'll just put no flam on the repeats. So the snares and cymbals have a crescendo. The tenors and bass drums are just loud. Um, snares were coming out of this. So why don't we, all right, let's, let's do, I got an idea. It's genius, I'm telling you. Forte piano in the snare and cymbals and everything. Everything's going to be forte piano. I'll change these parts in a second. So this crash is now going to be a crash choke. Ooh, stop that sound. Get it forte piano. It's sort of the way that that white boy smooth cadence ends, the, the one that I wrote. Um, I don't like these accents, though. Let's take them out. And I don't like this drag. Let's just make it a flam. Okay, snare part is now fixed and looks great. The next jacked up part is the bass drum part. Yes, the tenor drum part is the most jacked up, as usual. People don't know how to write for tenors. So this bass drum part, it looks like the whole thing is 
space three and four just have unisons and then there's like splits over top of that in base one and two and then there's a couple splits throughout so i just feel like doing it like that um a lot of these splits when there's like unison parts in the bottom drums the top drum splits are just gonna like sound muddy and probably dirty like you have base two on like the e and the uh the whole time it's I just worry that this is not going to come across very well with all that's going on in, in just the bass drums. I'm confident it would sound a lot better if we just make some of these notes full unisons, like all four of them playing, and during the split parts, take out the bottom drums. It'll just sound cleaner, and most likely the groove will come across better. Another thing, these rim clicks, just like I said with the snare drums, these on the bass drums, they're not going to be heard because of all that's going on. Although I do think writing some rim clicks for bass drums, it'll help with the timing of the unison notes. Like if you have like a note on the E, you might want to do like a click on the downbeat to help with that. Although this part looks like there's just a lot of rim clicks and that's going to make the part even harder for no reason. Yeah, so bass four and three have this. Let's see. <laughs> yeah, that's a lot of rim clicks uh, for no reason. So the, the unison without the rim clicks would be one... The one place I would put a click, there isn't one. I would put one right here before that E. So it would be... That would make it easier to get the E. So all right, with all that said, um, I am thinking we need to just like take out a lot of notes, starting with all of the rim clicks. Let's get them out of here. All right, let's just... Some of these unisons I think can come out. I don't think they're necessary. And this could definitely be everyone. Yep, just like that. And same with this note. Yeah, honestly, some of this is just, like, personal taste. Like, anyone could write anything for this, but I'm just trying to keep the rhythms somewhat the same to, you know, keep the rhythmic integrity going here. Okay, so I made it this. Uh, it's pretty simple. Splits uh, should be very effective and very easy to clean up. And then we get to this part here. Now, I wouldn't write this in a cadence, all right? Even like with experienced bass drummers, um, I'm assuming this whole cadence is written for a high school group. But the thing with a part like this is this is something you're going to have to maintain like throughout the season. Like you're going to have to constantly work on this part <laughs> to make sure it's good. Like all these like partials and the ease, the us, like all this stuff is going to be very difficult to clean. And back when I taught high school band, I never never wanted to work on the cadence during the season, okay? I just wanted to learn that crap at the very beginning and then not need to touch it ever again after that point. Because you don't get scored on how good your cadence is, okay? They score you on the show music. All you do with the cadence is you just use it to march out on the field. But I wouldn't write a part like this in the cadence unless this part was also in the show music. Then I guess you're practicing for the show music. But I'm just going to assume that this isn't in the show music, so we're going to water it down. Make it easier and equally as effective. Perfect. Beautiful. Effective and easy. That's the way you gotta do it sometimes. Alright, moving on to the tenor part. We got our work cut out for us here. Okay, so we got the snare tap off and it looks like a little tenor solely. Uh, what do we got? Let's see. Again, there's no sticking. I have no idea what the heck. Uh, anything just feels uncomfortable with that drum combination. Let's see. Let's, let's make this uh, kind of harder and cooler. Yeah, that sounds pretty cool and includes some rudiments. Uh, just like that other tenor thing, there's like no rudiments in this whole entire thing. That's uh, a little concerning. So we're going to add some. Okay, cadence overhaul complete. I think these parts make a lot more sense and should be more fun and easy to play. But let's go test it out for real. guys so much for watching hopefully you found this video enjoyable and educational if you did make sure that you click that subscribe button ring that liberty bell and click that like button 
Thank you to everyone who supports me over on Patreon. If you are able to, please consider making a donation over there. It helps the channel a whole lot. And also consider buying a custom t-shirt such as this one. I will leave that link in the description. And have a good morning.